All right, everybody, welcome back. I am back from Reno, and I had a very successful trip. I didn't actually go any snowboarding, but I did get to gamble a little bit, and I was able to come up a couple of hundred dollars, and so I'm super happy right now coming back from Reno, and I've decided to go ahead and cast the games from the G-Star All-Star Tournament. Uh, I was asking basically in the last couple of games I did, would you guys like to see the rest of this tournament? And the answer was a resounding yes. So I'm not going to argue with democracy, I'm not going to argue with the people, and I'm going to go ahead and cast this game. This is the next game in the round of eight of the G-Star All-Star Tournament. And when I say round of eight, I do mean that there are eight players left. This is a tournament bracket style. So, in the, la in the first game I cast, it was Foxer versus Fruit Dealer. Foxer, also known as Fake Boxer, did win the first game, and he moved on. Uh, the next game I casted, who was it between... It was between Tester and somebody else. I think Tester won. I'm not exactly sure. Um, but this is going to be game number three. And it is between the real boxer, a.k.a. Boxer, Slayer's Boxer, who's playing here as the Blue Terran. Interestingly enough, has opened up with a barracks and a supply depot, not at the top of his ramp, but rather at the bottom of his ramp. So that's a very interesting opening right there. And uh, do I need to really say any more about Boxer? He is pretty much the legend of StarCraft Brood War recently converted over to StarCraft 2, and his opponent in this round of eight of the G-Star All-Star Tournament is going to be Kyrix Zenith. And I'm just gonna call him Kyrix for short. Looks like he is gonna be opening up with a hatch first opening. So both of these players, South Korean descent, and this is in the G-Star All-Stars Tournament, which basically was a tournament set up in South Korea by GOM TV featuring the the All-Stars. It's like the cele it's like the celebrity matchup. You pit, you know, Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie, uh I don't know, who, what other celebrities are there out there in the world? You put them all together in a big tournament, and you have them play against each other. It's kind of like, uh, who wants to be a millionaire celebrity status? But anyways, it is going to be a Makarak strategy from Boxer here. So he is going to be opening up with early pressure. And the reason why I say that is because Boxer has thrown down this barracks at the front. And oh, now he's going to lift up the barracks and put it down on the bottom side to lower that rush distance for the uh, Marines coming out. And the drone did not see it. The drone did not see the barracks come out here and land. And Boxer is going to be opening up with very, very early aggression. Is Kyrix Zenith going to be able to deal with this is the is the question now that it's on everyone's mind. The first bunker is on the way. Uh, no Marines in range yet, but uh, Kyrix Zenith does see this bunker. He's going to pull his drones off the line. He has the spawning pool down already, so he should have links coming out. As you can see, four links on that production tab. And is it going to be enough to deal with this bunker? We are about to see. It looks like the SCV will get taken out, so the bunker was not able to finish. And I think that Kyrix Zenith will be able to hold this off. Uh, uh, yeah, I think he should be just fine. Uh, Kyrix Zenith doesn't see the barracks, but they're still uh, the, the, the Marines are still very, very far away. They have to start to march their way down towards that natural, and the bunker has already been taken out. So I think that Zenith should be able to hold this off. This is a lot of Marines. Once he sees these Marines, he should start to produce a mass number of Zerglings. There we go. And you guys look on that production tab. Once those drones finish, we should see a bunch of Lings pop out uh, uh otherwise zenith is just gonna lose to a mass marine rush either we're gonna see links or we're gonna see a spine crawler uh it looks like we're not gonna see any of the uh, either option for zenith he's actually just gonna keep droning up and this could hurt him quite badly he needs to make a bunch of links right now he's moved his overlord in and he sees the factory does he see the other barracks no he does not so he still doesn't know about the second barracks it's about to float in though so i think he is gonna see it and uh, he does see the cc so i think boxer for a moment there could have been aggressive could have done some damage but he decided to fall back uh and he's just gonna play economic style now he's gonna get his own command center up and this is exactly what Zenith wants, this is Kyrick Zenith. He wants the Terran player to play economical because he opened up with this early hatchery, so he's already got this lead going for him. Uh, and he, there's, a, there's two different options he could go for right now. He could either go for a third hatchery, or he could go for a Baneling's Nest and try to do an eco Baneling Bust, which is kind of risky, but it can pay off huge dividends if the Terran player is not expecting it. And an eco Baneling Bust is one of those things that is very, very difficult to, uh, to, to expect and to prepare for. All right, here comes the Zerglings, though, for Karak Zenith. He's going to test the front door, but there's a lot of Marines there, including that bunker going up. 
I think. Yeah, those Zerglings are going to be forced to push away at that speed. Just finishing right now. And we have 18 Zerglings on the way for Kyrix Zenith. I think he is going to go for this Eco Baneling Bust after all. Yeah, the Baneling's Nest is down. He's not getting a lair. He's got 10 Baneling's on the way. Oh my goodness. Boxer is going to be in a lot of trouble. He needs to get another bunker up. He's trying to get Blue Flame Hellions out, but Hellions are really not that good against Baneling's because keep in mind, Hellions are light. Let's take a look at uh, Kyrix Zenith's first... Eh, Kyrix Zenith's first person view. I get, I do get tongue-tied once in a while. Just getting so excited watching these Banelings. We're about to see some explosive action here. Over to Boxer's point of view. Does he see the Banelings? Now he sees it. Gonna switch to all of you. The Banelings going right after the bunkers. But, uh, not sure if that was exactly worth it. There isn't really anything inside those bunkers, I don't believe. And now, the Baneling number was lowered considerably. Uh, and really, I don't think Boxer lost all that much because he didn't have SCVs there. He wasn't mining. He was about to bring his command center there, but the Banelings now telling him, okay, I need to sit back. I don't want to get my expo quite yet, but oh man, here comes the Banelings once again. Is Boxer prepared to deal with this? He's got a lot of Blue Flame Hellions. It looks like the majority of the Banelings were taken out by fodder units at the front, and now the Blue Flame Hellions can start to go to work. Boxer pulling all of his SCVs off the mineral line. The SCVs, only about three or four going down and the majority of them able to go back to work but Boxer is still very far behind at 23, 23 under 38 harvesters gonna switch back to the player cam of Boxer here as he roasts up some Zerglings just outside his base we can also see a Roachhorn going up on the production tab for Kyrix Zenith and that really is the it's what the unit it's the unit you have to get if uh, your opponent is going for Blue Flame Hellions you have to get uh, roaches, otherwise the Blue Flame Hellions are just gonna destroy everything. So I do like this idea from, uh, from Kyrex Zenith. We're switching over to, to his first person view right now, and we can actually see that he has got a considerable amount of APM, 261 average, currently at 300, and he's also, uh, if we're looking over at the minimap, we can see there is a hatchery going up, as well as two crawlers, so... And 12 roaches, wow, my goodness. I think that, a uh, Boxer should be... Uh, I don't think he's going to be able to do any damage. I think Zenith should be able to hold this off with his crawlers and with his 12 roaches on the way. Uh, yeah, these blue flame hellions are going to be held back. And yeah, I think this is going to be a good position for Zenith. As long as his hatchery up here does not get spotted. Uh, it looks like the hellions are making their way over there. No, they're not going to go check out that, that location. So, right now, the Zerg player looking to be in a very good position at 38 over 24 Harvesters. Uh, it looks like a, a, a dropship over there was planning to ferry over some Blue Flame Hellions, but the dropship was spotted by the Roaches. Uh, some Overlords here. I was going to call good attention to these Overlord placements, but now Boxer is going to take him out with a couple of Marines. Looks like the Marines will get countered by the Roaches. And here comes the Blue Flame Hellions. There's only three left. I wonder what happened to the dropship. Oh, there it is, the dropship. It's actually dropping off right in into the main mineral line. Oh my goodness, so many Hellions could uh, kill a lot of drones. At the meanwhile, at the natural expansion, a lot of drones getting taken down as well. Oh, this is a massacre inside the mineral line. Kyrix Zenith is going to be kicking himself in the face, but at the same time, he is making a counterattack. So this is eye for an eye right now. The SCV is trying to repair that bunker, and I think the bunker, uh, yeah, it did go down. There's only one bunker left. A couple of Blue Flame Hellions still alive inside the mineral line. I think all the drones have gone down well uh, let's see about 11 drones remain for the zerg player now if boxer can hold on if he can get rid of these roaches then he should be in a great position but i don't think he's going to be able to do it in fact he's he needs marauders right now and unfortunately he's only got one barracks excuse me two barracks scratch that pumping out marauders it might not be enough one dropship here with a couple of scvs but more lings flooding in and I think that, that Kyrix Zenith is going to win this game. Taking out that starboard means no more air units. That Banshee gets cancelled along the way. And uh, meanwhile, back at the Zerg place, he is reproducing drones. Still one dropship there. But the Zerg player is producing drones right now. Doesn't have to really worry about anything. And the Terran player really is the one in trouble. He's got to fend off these Marauders and these Lings. Or excuse me, these Roaches and these Lings. How crazy would that be if Zerg players had Marauders? That'd be Imba. But I think that uh, after these meals expire, and perhaps even the roaches are going to end up killing them, then this should be GG here. Uh, nonetheless, a great battle. Eye for an eye. I did not expect that to happen. But it did kind of come down to just a, a good old trade my army for your army, but uh, inside your own base. 
And at the end of the day, I think that the Terran player is going to come out on the bottom here. One Siege Tank popping out, but the Siege Tank will not survive. It gets taken down. And it looks like um, these these Hellion, these uh, Roaches are still doing quite a bit of damage. More Roaches and Lings on the way. And this is pretty much the last Marauder for Boxer. We're going to switch over to his player cam. Desperately trying to keep his base alive. He's microing his Hellions away wherever possible. But you guys can see he's only got two Harvesters left compared to 20 and all the buildings are now falling to the constant roachling pr uh, production flooding into his base so gg calls boxer an incredible game from both these players and this is once again the g-star all-stars tournament it is a best of three if you guys haven't seen the last games i i know i spoiled them already but you know what go ahead and check them out if you guys haven't been able to see them we're gonna basically cast the entire tournament from the round of eight onwards so after this game, after this round of eight series, we're going to do the semifinals, the third place, and the finals. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this broadcast, and we're going to go ahead and move on to game two between Kyrick Zenith and Slayer's Boxer.